Moments in disc golf are what we strive for. Doesn't mean they have to be good. Sometimes the best and the worst moments go hand in hand. They both are used to propel the sport forward for years to come. That's what we're going to look at today in the entire history of disc golf. What are the moments that changed the sport forever? From discoveries and technology to the decisions from players to leave their companies. These are the 10 moments that changed disc golf forever. Disc technology, basket technology, even mobile technology, all of it contributes to how the game is seen today. So much has been invested into this sport by so many amazing individuals. Today we're going to get to shine some light on how they changed the sport. For better or for worse, these are the 10 moments that had the biggest impact in the history of disc golf. Before we get into the video, I have a very exciting announcement. I've been working with the crew at Whale Sacks to come out with an RM Disc Golf Whale Sack. A whale sack is a tie-on, whale-shaped grip bag that is designed to dry your wet and sweaty hands. I wanted to partner with a brand that I actually use, and I've carried a whale for the last two years. Whale sacks allowed me to have my input when it comes to the design, and I'm pretty proud of what we've come up with. If you want to support the channel and support a great brand like Whale Sacks, make sure to go check them out. Link is in the description below. Alright, back to the video. Disc golf when it started was a very, and I mean very different sport than what we see today. The discs were different, the courses, pretty much everything about it was new and underdeveloped. But with time came creation, and the first big moment to change the game forever would be the creation of the disc golf basket. Before baskets we see now, there were a few different versions of the chain catcher that we know and love. The first version of the disc golf had no baskets, it was just object golf. That object for most tournaments would be poles stuck in the ground. You throw until you hit the pole, and only until you hit that pole would the hole be finished. Object golf is still around to this day on some U-disc courses. Well, back in the 1970s, Steady Ed Hedrick was working on configuring the first disc golf basket. He had some variations, but the goal remained the same. He wanted something that stood on a pole to catch discs. After a few different versions, he finally patented the flying disc entrapment device. This is what we now know as the chain basket. Updates would come in later years, but this was the first big leap in disc golf technology. It was now a more complete sport with its own version of a disc golf hole. The moment the disc golf chained basket was created was the first moment that the sport became regulated. No more hitting fire hydrants, the sport of disc golf now had a target that could become universal. Disc golf history is shrouded in technology. There are a lot of different inventions and breakthroughs that people had, but nothing that changed the future of disc golf more than the beveled edge. At the beginning of disc golf, the discs they used were nothing like the ones we now have. In the early days, they used wide, rounded discs just like the ones used in Ultimate. That's why in the old videos you see a lot of turnover glide and players basically throwing them straight into the air because they didn't have the discs that could take that much torque. Until 1983. The history is a bit iffy. Dave Dunapace is attributed with the creation of the first beveled edge disc, but just before the Eagle was PGG approved, the Discraft Phantom was also approved and had a beveled edge. Doesn't really matter who did it first, what matters is that it was done. The event should made it more aerodynamic and able to take the force of a full throw. The disc golf discs were no longer catch toys. Now they were their own complete thing with both baskets and beveled edge discs. The creation is responsible for every single disc golf manufacturer that you have now. Without this, without the ability for discs to fly as far as they can, the game would be completely different. Once the beveled edge was created, another issue came up. What would the plastics be? Innova was the leading manufacturer at the time, and they were coming out with plastics we still know like the DX plastic. It was a baseline plastic, and it's pretty much what everyone threw. Premium plastics that we have today had to start somewhere, and they did with the Millennium Discs running complete lines of premium plastics. It was risky, disc golf was very young, and premium discs cost more, so were players willing to spend more than they would for the regular DX plastic? The idea of premium discs was out there, but Millennium Discs were the first people to take the idea and make it their brand. Innova would manufacture them, it was just on Millennia themselves to be the one responsible with promoting it. It wasn't hard since players were suddenly throwing 40 to 50 feet further. Now you had to have premium in your bag. It worked out. Now every huge company has their own line or multiple lines of premium discs. This plastic, alongside the invention of the beveled edge, were what catapulted the disc golf technology that we now have. One of the biggest moments in the history of disc golf, without premium plastics, we wouldn't have the quality that we see today. Disc golf in the 80s and 90s was growing, but it needed a way to combine the massive tournaments across the US. It was hard for players to know how good they really were because the talent was spread out over such a wide area. The only way they competed together each year was the World Championship. 
until 2003 when the national tour was established. Now every player could join up with the first disc golf tour, playing events all over the US against the best the game had to offer. Not even close to what we have today where players are able to make a living, but back then it was just a way to get around and see if you could hold your own against the Ken Climos and Barry Schultz. The national tour and the PGGA worked side by side, making an elite level of disc golf events that helped to grow the sport on the professional level. Nothing like watching the best go at it to motivate you to get into the game. Without the national tour, we wouldn't have what we have today. Now you could compete on a tour with the elite players of your time. The first of its kind propelling the sport forward for the pros to play and for us to watch. The sport has been expanding, technology is popping up every day helping the sport to keep moving forward. But like with everything, for a sport to be sustainable it needs the common man to be involved. Pro tours make it exciting, technology makes the sport work, but it takes the money of the everyday disc golfer to keep the sport going. The 2000s and 2010s saw growth, but nothing compared to the help that UDisc would provide. When thinking of the most impactful moments in disc golf, I immediately thought of what I do every time I play. When you step up to the tee with your buddies, the first question is always, who's going to do the UDisc? Now for scorecards, it's nothing crazy, it's just a scorecard that makes it available for you to team up with people and be on the same card. Nothing revolutionary about that, but the course to course specifics is what makes UDisc shine. Without it, how would you know about the courses in your area? Disc golf isn't as big as golf, sometimes it's hard to get Google searches that are up to date on the courses in your area. Well, if you're not on UDisc, it probably doesn't exist. Without the UDisc map of courses, the sport would look so different. No public course ratings, worldwide rankings, stats on which state has the best courses. All of this wouldn't be available. I can't think of what the sport would be like without it. It's the best app in disc golf, and it's the most important thing in disc golf technology since the creation of the beveled edge. We wouldn't have seen the growth that we have seen in the past few years if it wasn't for the people at UDisc. The moment they created the app was the moment disc golf came online. Anywhere you go, it might have a course close by. Just check UDisc. In the 2010s, there was a crucial shift in disc golf. So far, the national tour is getting bigger and bigger, so is the sport itself. But no matter how many tournaments you have, the only people who get to see them are those who attend. And as we all know, you can't see everything that happens on the course. The biggest moments in the sport seem to be missed without coverage. That's where Joe Metz Production steps in. The national tour and big events of the year did not have full coverage. There were some YouTube videos here and there, but Disc Golf needed that stable production for the fans at home to watch the tournaments. Disc Golf didn't have that huge broadcasting deal that they needed, so instead the sport itself had to find a different way. It found that in post-produced Disc Golf. Missed the tournament? Just watch it the next day. Sunday Disc Golf Championship that you didn't get to watch? Well, just check out Jomez on Monday for the final round lead card coverage. Now at first, just like with everything, it has to build up. Jomez was not the weld oil machine that we now have. The production company grew as the sport grew, and it wasn't the only company that did that. Because of Jomez Pro, we have Gatekeeper Media, GK Pro, Central Coast. These companies are there because of what Jomez did. They might not have been the first people to ever post a disc golf video, but they are the biggest production company in disc golf. We now have the live disc golf network that you can watch, but it's always nice to just sit down and watch a whole round of championship disc golf in like an hour. The moment Jomez started making videos was the moment that they changed the way we view disc golf. In disc golf, we've seen some amazing players over the years. Different styles throughout the decades, but always a champion crowned. Whether or not you think he's the greatest disc golfer of all time, it's undeniable that Paul Macbeth has had the greatest impact on the sport. Who threw the beveled edge the best? Macbeth. Who do we watch on Jomez win all those tournaments? Macbeth. The sport needed to grow, and it did that, on the back of Paul Macbeth. As he won world championships and made incredible shots, his stock rose. It rose so much, in fact, that when you saw him throw, you wanted to know what kind of discs he was using. From 2005 to 2018, Macbeth was sponsored by Innova Discs. Four world championships were won by Macbeth using Innova. And that's just world titles. He dominated the sport of disc golf from 2012 to 2018. In 18, though, came a big decision and a moment that would impact the sport forever. Paul Macbeth, the current world number one, would decide to leave Innova for another company. Discraft would sign him for four years, one million dollars. The biggest signing in disc golf to date, Macbeth now had opened the floodgates. If he was capable of making this money, so were other players. Because of Macbeth and his deal with Discraft, the rest of the pro scene was able to grow. After two years of being a part of Discraft, his contract would change, now going for 10 years, 10 million dollars. If Macbeth had never left Innova, he wouldn't be making the money he did today. And if he wasn't doing that, then everyone else's contracts would be small. Macbeth paved the way for disc golf, and then he paved the way for his fellow pros to sign bigger and better contracts. The moment he changed to Discraft was the moment disc golf got upgraded. No one was expecting what would happen in 2020. Out of the blue, the world was hit by a pandemic. 
for disc golf, that meant the shutting down of events for a minute. We may not have had some events to watch, such as the 2020 World Championship, but disc golf persevered and those who were behind it. The disc golf tours did what they could, regulations were met, and the sport was played in different locations that would allow it. But just like the fact that the pandemic was unexpected, so was the growth after it hit. Everything else we've covered in the video led up to this moment. The sport was prepared for more people to join, and that's what it got. All across the world, people were looking for different ways to get outside and enjoy their time. That's what happens when people are told to stay inside all day. You get sick of it. So when you go to parks and see people throwing a disc at a basket, you wonder if you can try it too. That's what I did. Now here we are after three years of a pandemic hitting the world, disc golf has grown like crazy. The PDGA had 100,000 members in 41 years. In 2020 and 2021, the PDGA grew by 60,000 members alone. Courses started popping up everywhere, different countries started adding places to play, everything changed since the pandemic, and for the better. The moment that COVID happened was the biggest impact for growth in disc golf. World championships mean world-class talent, and in order to win one, you have to beat the best the game has to offer. The dangerous players who can pop off for a few rounds to the guys who are always at its top is a constant battle. Who's going to break through to claim the title? In 2021, the first world championship was held since the pandemic had hit. 2020 Worlds was cancelled, so this made for a very big event. It's the disc golf tournament every pro wants to win. Write your name in the record books. Well, James Conrad did that by not only winning, but winning with the greatest shot, aka the holy shot. A simple turnover shot would change the disc golf scene forever. Paul Macbeth, the GOAT, would take second place after Conrad threw in and then beat him in a playoff. But that's not what the highlights show. They don't care about Macbeth, they don't care about the playoff. They just care about this guy who looks like Jesus made a shot to win the world championship. James Conrad would appear on sports channels all over the internet. This shot, the holy shot, would go down in history as the greatest shot we've ever seen on the biggest stage possible. The NV, the disc he used, would go on to do insane sales, carrying MVP production on its back. James Conrad changed disc golf with just one shot. Just one moment that made history. Now every time we think of Worlds, we think of him and how he shocked the world. In 2016, the Disc Golf Pro Tour was established. At the time, the National Tour was still up and running. During its creation, a couple other tours came along, such as the World Tour and the American Tour. The American Tour flopped, the World Tour on the other hand did a little bit better. But in 2022, a decision was made. There were no longer players who had to jump from elite pro tour events, silver series events, national tour events, and majors. Instead, the Disc Golf Pro Tour would absorb the national tour to make one pro tour, the official tour of the PDGA. Last year, we got to see the result of that, as some events on the national tour were made into elite series and silver series events. The pro tours have unified, making for a complete tour spanning all across the US and into Europe. In 2023, the tour is changing things up again, making some events elite series plus and having Silver Series events in Canada and Europe. The sport of disc golf has changed so much over the years. So many moments to count, so many crucial decisions that have been made. But in those moments, people rise to the occasion, just like you just did, and Jomez, and the founders of our beloved sport. Everything down to the exact ways that the chains catch the basket. It's all been thought out, tweaked, and worked on. All of it led to the sport that we now have. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to check out the channel. Plenty of other videos on there just like this. Make sure to check out the RM Disc Golf Whale Sacks using the link in the description. Alright, we'll see you next time. Cheers.